been a nominee for Best Newcomer at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and can be seen at Sydney's Comedy Store on September 7, performing his solo show, It's Nice, It's Modern. Please welcome Sam Taunton! Hello! Hello! Oh, that's too much! Too much! Thank you for having me. Uh, it's such a treat to be here. I realise uh, I've got a bit of, like, an Eastern Suburbs fuckboy vibe uh, going. <laughs> Thank you. So it's a bit unfamiliar for the public broadcaster. But... Uh, it's a real treat to be here. I like doing comedy. Last year I was doing comedy in India. Uh, that's right, the comedy mecca that is India. And um, a lot of people say to me, they're like, Sam, what was it like as an Australian doing stand-up comedy in India? And the answer is, fucked. Just like, <laughs> like, just like, so I can't stress how badly I did at every show. No one could understand what I was saying. Uh, I don't know if you guys know much about stand-up comedy, but language is very important. Um, <laughs> For how it all goes down. The thing that noticed, I noticed about India was that like everyone on the street just comes up and talks to you. Everyone's in a good mood. They're just talking to you. I think we need to do less of that as a global society. <laughs> Stop talking to people. <laughs> Don't you think it's crazy you're just allowed to talk to people? Have you ever thought about that? You're just allowed to talk to... There's no law against it. Anyone in this world, you're just allowed to... Talk. Like, if you want to talk to me after this, like, don't. But <laughs> my point is you can, do you know what I mean? And it goes up a level now. You'll be walking down the street, someone will give you something, a physical thing, they'll hand it to you. you just walk, they just hand you a thing. you just got to take it. The other day I was walking down the street and then I got to the pedestrian lights. I was about to cross, right, and I was waiting for that little green person to pop up, right? Now, that is danger zone for crazy people talking to you. <laughs> Until that little green person pops up, you are trapped. You can't move, you're a sitting duck out in the open. And I was standing there, fingers crossed, hoping no one would talk to me. Out of nowhere, a man emerged, there was like a puff of smoke, hands me a copy of the Bible, and then goes, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and then just scampered away. <laughs> now that's where I draw the line. Right, like you can't give someone a book on the street. Like, like you can't. Like if that was any other book, you'd call the police. <laughs> Like, you would. Think about it. Imagine if you were on the street minding your own business, someone came up to you, stopped you, handed you a copy of Harry Potter and was like, never trust anyone from Slytherin, and then just fucked <laughs> off. <laughs> You'd be like, call the asylum. I think someone's escaped and they've robbed a library, right? But then that became a blessing in disguise for me, right? Because then I became a man standing on the street holding a Bible. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever walked down the street before holding a Bible, but people get the fuck out of your way. <laughs> No one's talking to you. Don't worry about it. Just no one's making eye contact with you. People are actually just walking to oncoming traffic. They're like, fuck it, anything's better than this. Line me up. <laughs> like that's probably how Moses part of the Red Sea. I reckon he just <laughs> turned up with a copy of the Bible, and the water went. Oh no, absolutely not. Let him through. All right. <laughs> Can ask us if we found God? No, thank you, right? The weirdest thing in my life happened in India, though. One morning we were in Delhi, north of the country. We were doing some shows. I woke up in the morning, I thought, I'm going to have a shower. Right now, that's not the weird part of the story. Right? That's something I do every day. But I got in the shower, things started heating up, right? A lot of steam going everywhere. And I thought, I need to cool this shower down, right? And I noticed out of the corner of my eye, there was a little window in the shower, right? And maybe I've lived a life of wealth, right? Maybe I've lived a life of Australian affluence. But normally, when I see a little window in a shower, I know there's going to be a little latch on that window. You prop the window open, the latch is going to stop the window going any further than about that far, it's going to prop open, it's going to let some hot air out, it's going to cool the shower down. I thought, let's do that, let's cool this shower down, right? And I've gone to open the window, but as I've gone to open the window, I quickly realised, oh shit, there's no latch, and the window swung wide open, and I don't know what the collective noun for a group of pigeons is, <laughs> but there were just like 12 pigeons on a ledge, just like staring back at me, very shocked to see a naked Australian man, mate, I don't think that was on their agenda for the day, and I freaked out, I was like, oh shit, pigeons, and I quickly went to shut the window, but as I went to shut the window, I accidentally got a pigeon stuck in between between the window and I just dragged a pigeon into the shower with me and ladies and gentlemen I don't know if you've ever had a shower with a pigeon before but no one tells you what to do in that situation you are completely on your own they don't teach it at schools or university triple j hack don't do a five minute segment on it you are abs and by the way the pigeon was going fucking mental like like most insane I've seen a pigeon go flying ever and fair enough like put yourself in the pigeon shoes like one minute it was just having the best day of its life with like 12 of its friends like on a ledge going how good's this view eating seed or whatever they do out of nowhere a magical wall has emerged dragged it into like Niagara Falls this naked dude's leaning down to pick it up dick just swinging around like just hidden in the he thought it was a worm it was trying to eat it I I tried to pick the pigeon up. I tried to pick up a pigeon in India. That's malaria 101, right? I tried to pick it up, throw it over the ledge. Finally, I was like, I'm losing this fight to the pigeon. I was like, how can I be losing a fight to a pigeon? I was like, I'll trap it in the shower. And I ran out to the main part of my hotel room and I was like, I'll ring the front desk. They'll know what to do. So I rang them up and I was like, hey guys, you probably get this all the time. Um, but there is a pigeon in my shower. And I swear to God, they said, is it your pigeon? <laughs> 
What do you mean, is it my pigeon? Do you think I'm bringing a pigeon with me hotel to hotel? Or do you think it's a honing pigeon? And in Australia, I was like, hey, meet me in the shower in Delhi. Like, no. <laughs> it's not my pigeon. The guy on the phone goes, we'll send some men up. And I was like, men? I was like, why is it plural? All of a sudden, five men walk into my room. They're like, where's the pigeon? I was like, oh, it's just in the shower. And they kind of walk over like it's an NCIS crime scene. He goes, how'd the pigeon get in? I was like, oh, just through that little window there. And he goes, that window. I'm like, yeah, but don't know. That window opens the window, five more pigeons come in. <laughs> now I've got six pigeons, five men in my hotel room. I don't know if you know much about the pigeon to man ratio, but that's fucking way off, right? <laughs> you always want more men to pigeons at every time in your life. The guy's kind of banging around. They go, go sit on the lounge. We'll sort this out, right? So I go sit on the lounge. 20 minutes pass, 25 minutes pass. The main guy walks back out. He's like, Sam, we've gotten rid of three of the pigeons. <laughs> How many pigeons would be good for you? I was like, we're not cutting a deal on pigeons, man. No pigeons. Definitely no pigeons. He's like, all right. He walks back in. Another few minutes pass. He comes back and he said, Sam, there's one pigeon left. I said, is it the original pigeon? He said, very hard to tell. <laughs> And then he's like, you should get the pigeon out. I'm like, why is it on me now? And he goes, well, you let the pigeon in. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good logic. So we're all walking. Me and six men, Indian men are walking around my hotel room trying to work how to get it out. I walk over to my bed and next to the bed there was a set of drawers. And I opened the top drawer and there was nothing in it. And I opened the second drawer and there was nothing in it. Then I opened the bottom drawer and I pulled out a copy of the Bible and it just fucked off straight away. <laughs> Thank you very much.